Hi guys, and welcome to our new video. Today we'll be taking a pause from our previous video on industry laws, and we will be going into MYP Crip B, which is a pattern investigation. So we are going to be doing a problem of that kind. So our problem is going to be relating to quadratics, so that is going to be our theme today. Let's get started. So this is just a, just a reminder that you guys can always send us specific problems or concepts that you are struggling on as our channel is really not about following a rigid curriculum. It's about helping you guys. So you can do that through our email, reaching out to us privately, or maybe popping down a comment in the comment section. We would love to hear from you and we'd very, be very willing to help you. And we might just make a video addressing your issue. Next, we'll be moving on, and just to mention that this video has a lot of text in it because we will be working through a problem, and we are going to be writing essentially an essay on it because Crip B is about writing. It's not just about doing simple problems, right? Okay, so this is generally what you do when you have a Crip B pattern investigation. So you generate data, you organize that data, you formulate a rule, and then you verify that rule. But, and then the final step is to justify it and say why it works. So here's our problem. So we are investigating the relationship between the figure number and the number of dots in that figure. So as shown, again, this is our problem. And generating data is about saying, how does the pattern grow? And that you can extend the pattern by drawing more cases. That's part of generating data. So according to this figure, some of my observations is that it grows by adding the figure number of dots for every new figure. So for example, figure five is five more dots compared to figure four. And those new dots are always on the same row and that row is on the bottom. So circled in orange, this is just to make it clear exactly what is being added for each figure. So now we are going to extend the pattern. So figure six has six more dots, figure seven has seven more. So, yep, so these are the two new cases that have been extended. So next, we need to organize that data. This is very important because it allows the data to be easy to work with. So a good way to do this is using a table as I have done. We've made some basic observations and listed in each figure, how many dots there are. And then uh, we have found that when X increases at a constant rate of one, Y has a second common difference of one, which means, as you can see, shown with arrows, the differences of the differences, if that makes sense, is always one. And to make that clear, I've rewritten Y in a way that can make you possibly think on the way that I'm thinking, because what I would do with this type of problem is I would define a function called fx with the following terms, one, two, three, and so on, all the way to x. So essentially, when x is seven, y is one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six plus seven. By defining fx, we've made something easier. And there is, in fact, a relationship between fx and y, which is that y is always equal to the sum of the first x terms of fx. Okay, formulating our rule. So this is about using our data to generate a rule that fits your pattern. And this should be in the form of an equation. So as stated again, fx is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, dot, 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 x. And then that can be further written as omitting less of the values. The term right before x should be x minus 1, before that should be x minus 2. How do we know this is because we know that fx, the terms in fx, have a common difference of 1. What we're going to do now is, this, of course, the sum of fx is equal to y, and uh, we know what y is, as shown above. So we're going to double that. Doubling that is going to make it easier, and you're going to see how easier it makes it later on. So doubling it, that, and we've wrote the expression in two rows. So the top row is y, and the second row is y again, so 2y. 
And you can realize that the sum of each column, for example, the first column is 1 and x, the second column is 2 and x minus 1, they all add up to x plus 1. So this is essentially how you would approach this problem, one way to approach it. There were originally x terms to be added together, but we multiplied y by 2, so the terms have doubled into 2x terms. So we realize that there are x groups of x plus 1. As for every two terms, you get x plus 1. Therefore, as you can see, our formulated rule is y equals x times x plus 1 divided by 2. Now we're going to verify that rule. And this is very important because it really proves that your rule works. And a good way to do that is by continuing your pattern and seeing whether your rule fits that continuation. So right after figure seven comes figure eight. So I've drawn figure eight using that continuous pattern. And let's just count the dots. Well, there's 36 of them, right? You can just yeah, count them. What we wanna do is we wanna use our rule and plug in the value of eight into x, so x equals 8, and with that, figure out what y is according to our rule, and then see if that y is equal to 36. If it is, then your rule is correct. And we realize that it is. So our rule is probably correct, but in a real crippy test, you would want to verify your rule with more than one case. But due to time concerns, I'm only displacing one case here. Our last step is to justify this rule, and this is very important because it helps you with explaining why and how your rule works. Of course, this is also the hardest part, and that's why it's last. So there are many ways to justify any pattern investigation problem. You can use universally agreed formulas, or you can use simple self-created equations that make sense, and those could all be ways to justify. Today, I'm going to be using a universally agreed formula. So we realize that fx is a function with the terms 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. So fx is considered an arithmetic sequence, which is a sequence of numbers where the difference between the consecutive terms is constant. Of course, there's other ways to prove this. And so that is an arithmetic sequence, right? And fx is x, as we've defined before. Here comes the universal law. The universal law states for the sum of arithmetic sequence, because fx is an arithmetic sequence, so y is the sum of that, because we've said that before. So y should always equal the number of terms in fx multiplied by the first term of fx and the last term of fx divided by 2. So we know that the first term of fx is 1, and the last term is always x. Of course, depending on what figure you're on, that last term is constantly changing. But of course, x is a variable, so that makes sense. And the number of terms is always x as well. So therefore, the sum of fx, which is equivalent to y, should always equal, as you can see on the screen, x times 1 plus x divided by 2, so that proves the rule is correct. So that is it for today. Hopefully this has helped you prep for any crit B test that you guys are having and or just in general, because pattern investigation, I believe, is an integral part of math and real life as well. Because in real life, you're not going to have a lot of chances to work with different kinds of formulas unless you're a math professor. But these types of logical thinking skills are going to come in very handy in any time during life. So thank you guys. Next time we're going to be continuing with indice laws and hope you guys enjoyed this video. Like and subscribe and see you next time.